streaming live and so forth. And, and, and so our business shows online. I know you can watch anywhere, go anywhere. So I thank you for doing that you have made a point to dial and watch St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church here in Omaha, Nebraska. And all our visitors here, we thank you and we preach in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, heaven, Lord, we love you, we thank you, God, we honor you, we adore you. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be a part of what you are doing. And I say that, Lord, because this is your plan. You are the one who is working everything, and we are just on your team. So, Lord, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be on your team. I thank you that you allow me to be a part of your team and proclaim you your word. Lord, you don't need me, but you use me in spite of me, Lord. So I pray that you speak to me and speak to me. Bless those who are here, those who are online. Lord, I pray as always that souls are saved yes, yes. and lives are changed as a result of your yes. holy word. And all your people collectively says, in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Well, my friends, uh, we are continuing our uh, way through the book of Acts chapter 10 and perhaps chapter 11. And again, our focus is on evangelism. All right. As we've been studying on Bible study on Wednesday night, becoming a contagious church. And what we're focused on is are we are willing, are we able, are we capable, are we effectively sharing the gospel with those outside of the walls of the church? Because that's the commission Jesus has given us. And if you recall from last week talking the subject of the Lord is ready to hook you up. All right. And we saw a Roman centurion by the name of Cornelius. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Cornelius was a good man. He was a praying man. He was a faithful man. And as he was praying, we learned last week that the angel of the Lord showed up and basically told Cornelius, this Roman centurion, now he told him, said, Cornelius, God has been watching all over you. He's seen the good work you have been doing to his people. He's heard all your prayers, Cornelius. And, and now, Cornelius, the Lord is ready to hook you up. All right. Because, again, although Cornelius was a good man, he, he worshiped, as I said, and he prayed regularly. He was faithful. He made sure his entire household worshiped and prayed God regularly. The problem Cornelius had was he didn't know anything about Jesus. All right. He didn't know about the bread of life. He didn't know about the way, the truth, and the life. Cornelius didn't know about the resurrection and life. And, and he certainly didn't know that Jesus was the Lamb of God who had come to take away the sins of the world. And yeah. Satan, I tell you, it don't matter how well you got it going on. It doesn't matter what your bank account or your investment portfolio look like. It doesn't matter who you're kicking it with. It doesn't matter your skill set or what you drive. It doesn't matter where you work and how high you're climbing the ladder because if you don't know about Jesus, when you get to the top of that ladder, my friend, you may find out that your ladder is leaning against the wrong building. There's an entire community outside the four walls of this church. There's a community in your neighborhood who do not know about Jesus. And our job is to help to get them to know about Jesus. This past week and the past few weeks, we have seen and mother has been praying about all these shootings that's taking place. Saints, we have got to get busy when it comes to get the knowledge and the, the, the vision of Jesus Christ out in the community. We have to get serious about telling folks because this is how we're going to stop this. Paul, he tells the church in Ephesus, he said, there's a spiritual battle going on. There's a warfare going on. Anytime uh, a person can walk into a school and lock kids room and shoot them. You know that's nothing but demonic possession. It's a spiritual battle going on yes. and all the way we can yes. see that is the yes. power of Jesus Christ. Yes. And that's the job of the church to get that word out. Uh -huh. In text, we learned that Cornelius had it going on. All right. He was a high baller. He was a shot caller. But he did not know about Jesus. Well. But because Cornelius, we learned last week, was living right, because he was trying to do right, God was about to hook him up. Right. And all Cornelius had to do was to go send for this apostle by the name of Peter right. and bring him back to his home. My Lord. 
Text it te doesn't teach us how, 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 how uh, that Cornelius even knew who Peter was. The text doesn't teach us that, 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 that he clearly understood the purpose of why the angel told him to have Peter come back to his house. All we know, my friends, is that Cornelius listened to the angel of God. He didn't mess around. He didn't waste time. Well, he just sent some of his men to go get the apostle Peter. Well, and can I tell you, my friends, every time you listen to the Lord and do what God tells you to do, you are yeah, going to get the hook up. Will. Every time you listen to what God is saying, you are going to wake up. You are going to rise up and you are going to straighten up. And once you straighten up, and then you're going to start moving up. Every time you listen to the Lord, you are going to get picked up and he's going to set you up. Yeah, All yeah. God wants you to do is listen and do what he says. That's what was about to happen to this Roman centurion by the name of Cornelius. All, right. All because he listened to the Lord. Uh -huh. That was last week. And so my friends, if you have your Bibles, your iPhones, your iPads, whatever you're working with, stand if you will as honor God as we turn to the book of Acts chapter 10. All right. And let's read what's happening in the text. Acts chapter 10 beginning with verse 9. Acts chapter 10, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then we get to the book of Acts. Uh -huh. Acts chapter 10, beginning with verse 9. Here, my friends, is how the New Living Translation records God's word. The next day, as Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up on a flat roof to pray. It was about noon, and he was hungry. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the sky open and something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. All right. In the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles, and birds. Then a voice said to him, Get up here, kill, and eat them. No, Lord, Peter declared, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. But the voice, went, the voice spoke again, Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. All right. The same vision was repeated three times. Then his sheep was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Peter was very perplexed. What could the vision mean? Just then the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's house. Standing outside the gate, they asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have, come, have now come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. So Peter went down and said, I'm the man you're looking for. Why have you come? They said, we were sent by Cornelius, a Roman, a Roman officer. He is a devout and God-fearing man, well respected by all the Jews. A holy angel instructed him to summon you to his house so that he can hear your message. The first, the first part of verse 23 says, so Peter invited the men to stay for the night. All right. You may be seated, my friends, in the presence of the Lord. And as we take, as you take your seat, I want to talk about a good cleaning. A good cleaning. All right. You know, growing up on the south side of Chicago, uh, uh, my mom had a job for all of us. We had a lot of kids, a lot of brothers and sisters, and we all had a job that no one liked to do. All right. But it had to be done every single day. Mm -hmm. That job we refer to as busting the suds. All right. And young people, that means washing dishes. Uh -huh. In our household, with all these kids, my mom did not have a lot of money, but, but yet every week she could afford to replace a new dishwasher in our kitchen. Now she couldn't afford the names like Bosch and LG and uh, the LG and G or Whirlpool or KitchenAid or, or Maytag. She didn't have those best names and also those machines break down. No, my friends, my mom, she was industrious. Every week she installed a new dishwasher in our kitchen. All right, all right. Can I tell you the names of some of those dishwashers? Yeah, right. One week the name was Elon. <laughs> the next week that dishwasher was called Dana. And then the next week it was Donald. And, and then it was Daryl. And, and then it was Donnell. And then there was Double. And yes, there were a lot of these. And we were all dishwashers. <laughs> and I remember when I was washing dishes and, 
and I started young. I started when I was about eight or nine years old. Man. And I remember that I'm washing dishes one night, and my great-grandma, my mama Jessica, she comes into the kitchen, and, and she sees the kitchen a mess. Now, I'm washing dishes, but it's still a mess. And she began to tell me how, teach me how to clean the kitchen. She taught me how to stack up the dishes before I even started washing them. Because, see, I was just grabbing things and washing them and go grab something. First, she said, just stack everything up. All right. And then she showed me how to clean off the table and the countertops and, and wipe down the stove. And my mama just told me that kitchen should look clean before you even start washing the dishes. All right. All right. And so once she and I finished washing those dishes and, and getting those dishes clean, I'm ready to go run and watch television. She said, no, you're not done. <laughs> now you got to sweep the floor. <laughs> and so then I got the broom out. And Mama Jessie had me sweeping the floor. And I, and I felt good because I was done. And before I could really leave the kitchen, she said, you're not done. She said, now you got to mop the floor. Right. She was saying, this is how you clean the kitchen. Because that's what it means when you want to have a good cleaning. All right. In today's text, my friends, we again, we're picking up from last week, uh, and we do know this Roman centurion by the name of Cornelius, he has sent three of his people to, to the town of Joppa. Joppa was about 30 miles from where Cornelius lived in Caesarea. And his job was to bring back the apostle Peter. These three people didn't have a picture of Peter. Right. They didn't have his phone number. They didn't have a GPS. All right. All they had was a name and an address. Right, uh -huh. right. They said, you go to Simon Tanner, Tanner's house, Simon the Tanner, and you get Simon Peter. All right. And saints of God, can I tell you, sometimes, sometimes, that's how it's going to be. The Lord is not going to give you all the details, but he wants you to move. All right. God is not going to give you all the points and facts and specifics when he wants you to move. All right. But, but if we got, our job is to be obedient and move anyhow. All right. Because we know God can cause all things to work together for good. Yeah. Even though you don't know how it's going to work out. You may not have all the resources, but when you trust God anyhow, because he is Jehovah Jireh, and he will provide your needs, he will always provide. You may not even know how it's going to work out, how it's going to end up, but that's okay, because when you trust God, he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's right there at the beginning when you start, and he's always there waiting for you to show up at the end. He's already worked it out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. While this group was traveling to Joppa to go get yeah. the Apostle Peter, we see the Lord was already there yes, working on Peter. Yes, right. Because Peter was up on a rooftop praying. Uh -huh. And so, my friends, well. as we begin to go into this morning's text, yeah. I think it's important that in order for you and I mm -hmm. to appreciate a good cleaning, All right. first thing we must recognize is how dirty the situation is. All right. The church said you got to recognize. You gotta recognize. You must recognize how dirty the situation is. Mm -hmm. Okay. As I said earlier, I learned how to clean the kitchen Mama. when I was young. Mm -hmm. But can I tell you what else I learned how to clean when I was young? Well. When I was about 11 or 12 years old, mm -hmm. my mom told me and my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. how to clean the chickens. Uh -huh. All right, all right. She taught us all. That was my dad. Maybe two. I was young. She taught us all how to clean chilies. Yeah. And I could see us all standing around that kitchen sink, smelling all, mm -hmm. and we are cleaning those chilies. Uh huh. And we know about chilies because my mom, she bought like 20 pounds of chilies, but by the time you get finished cleaning and getting rid of all the fat and dirt and all the stuff, uh -huh. you only got about half of that left. That's right. In the text, we see Peter up on the rooftop in prayer. Mm -hmm. He was hungry, uh -huh. but he wasn't going to rush and eat. And I wonder, I know you're wondering, what does he got to do with chicken? I'll get back to that. I want to let you know. Uh -huh. But Peter was not going to blow up prayer just yet. He called out to me. He was not going to blow up prayer just because he was hungry. He was not going to give in to what his stomach grumbled just because he wanted to eat. Peter said, no, I'm going to go up and pray. Can I tell you this? Go ahead. Something happens when we pray. Yes, yes, yes. Something happens every time we pray because when you and I pray, God responds. Yes, and sometimes the reason why we don't see any movement in our lives, well, sometimes why we don't see any change in 
our circumstances, uh -huh. in our situation, because there is no prayer in our life. Right. Because we all know we've been taught that when there is much prayer, there is what? Much power. When there is no prayer, there is no power. And when there is no prayer, there is no power. And so we see Peter making a point at noon time to go up on that rooftop and start praying. Yeah. And while he's praying, the Lord was going to work. All right, shut up, shut up. Because we learned that again, the Lord told Cornelius, I'm about to hook you up. Well. And we learned last week that, that, that as Cornelius was praying, mm -hmm. an angel of the Lord showed up. Uh -huh. He got a vision from this angel. Mm -hmm. And now we see Peter up on the roof. And he's praying. And he's getting a vision. Well. Yes, my friends, this was a case of double vision. God was at work with two different individuals right, in two Lord, different Lord, locations Lord. working on the same part. All right. Oh, same part. That was your shot. Let me say that again. God was at work with two different individuals in two different locations working on the same problem. This is why you are getting excited at St. Paul because I mean, while you are praying here, God is working over there. Why are you got to deal with your boss? your medical issue here, God is working with the doctors over there. Yeah. You don't have to be in the same room. God doesn't need to have that person right there. God is going where they are and work out your situation. Yeah. All you need to do is stay in prayer. Yeah. God is so awesome that he's listening to you right now. Unclean. 
And Peter, we know, mm -hmm. being a good Jewish man, mm -hmm. as he was praying, well, he heard a voice that says, rise, Peter, uh -huh. kill, and eat. That. Yeah, oh, no. yeah. Sure, Peter was thinking, whoever was speaking knew these animals were clean. Uh -huh. Surely this voice I'm knew clean. these animals were dirty. Surely this voice knew that. these animals were forbidden to eat. Right. But yet this voice says, rise, Peter, kill, and eat. Right. Uh -huh. right. And then Peter recognized the voice, and I know he recognized it because his response was, no, Lord, I can't do that. God tells him, Jesus tells him, he says, my sheep hear my voice. Right, right. Right. When I speak, they know it's me. Peter said, this is the Lord talking to me. Uh -huh. But Peter's response was, even though he knows the Lord, here his response was, no, Lord, I cannot do that. No, Lord, this is not right. All of my life, Lord, I've never eaten anything unclean. All of my life, I tried to be a good Jewish boy, a yeah, good Jewish man. Yeah. I've never like that. Yeah. No, Lord, I cannot do that. Well, Peter was hungry, text uh -huh. Jesus. But he was still sticking to his guns. All right. Not willing to break Jewish laws. Uh -huh. This is what he had been taught since birth. All right. This is what the Jewish people have been taught for over 1,500 years. My Lord. You don't eat those animals. Uh -huh. This was God's law because God had called out the Jewish people uh -huh. He wanted them to be separate. He wanted them to be distinct and he distinct. And he wanted everyone who saw them to know that they were separate. All right. So God said, you don't eat these foods. Uh -huh. And us here in 2022, we may understand why Peter was so reluctant to rise up and eat. In our minds, Peter, go ahead and eat that. It's not that bad. And if you're hungry, it does not make sense. Go ahead and eat that food. Well, well, well. But can I beg you but just for a moment? Let's try, let's try, let's try. And let's put ourselves in Peter's position. All right. Well. Okay, okay. Let's think about the times you and I have been hungry. Well, all right. All right, all right, all right. You guys haven't been hungry. My mom had 12 kids. We've been hungry. Okay? All right. And there were times in our house that when there was no food in our home, no flour to make whole cakes, there was nothing. And all those times, those days when I was hungry, uh -huh. no food in the house at all. Now, one time that I wanted to eat a dog. All right. Now, one time that I ever think about eating a dog. All right. Because all my life I was taught you don't eat dogs. Right. Other people in other parts of the world have to go, but here in this country, we don't eat dogs. Uh -huh. As hungry as I was. Now, one time, I think about eating a cat. Right, right. Because we've been taught, you don't eat cats. Right, right. Now, one time in my life, all the time I have been hungry, did I ever think about eating a rat? Uh -huh. But they do in other parts of the world. But I have been taught, you don't eat rats. Why don't you eat rats? Because they're filthy, they're dirty, and they're disgusting. And we don't eat rats in this country. And no matter how hungry I am, I will never do it. That's what Peter was going through. He said, I've been taught my whole life not to eat that food. I cannot do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter wasn't trying to be difficult. He wasn't trying to be obstinate. He wasn't not trying to be stubborn head or, uh, or stubborn or anything like that. He would just say, I've been taught never to eat that stuff. Right, right. But my friends, in order to appreciate a good cleaning, you must first recognize how dirty the situation is. Right, right. You must first recognize how messed up it is. You must first recognize how bad off it is. If you're going to appreciate a good cleaning, you got to first see how dirty it was. This is what the Lord was showing Peter that day. He was hitting Peter where he hurts. He wanted Peter to know how bad off it was. He wanted Peter to know how extreme the situation was because God was about to do something. And I know I'm talking to somebody. I'm in your Kool-Aid. I even got your flavor because quiet is kept. Some of you were pretty messed up. Some of you were pretty jacked up. Some of you were just downright dirty. Some of you were bust, disgusting, could not be trusted. Some of you were all that sheep with unclean animals. Yes, my friends, you need a good cleaning because you were torn from the floor. And there are folks outside the door to this church who, like yourself, they just need a good cleaning. So don't be so hard on them. Don't be so mean to them because you too were like that. But I'm so glad, St. Paul, that even though we were dirty, even though we were unclean, I'm so glad. Oh!
Yes, Lord. We need to start saying. 
you know what? I'm not going to even share the gospel outside you. That's the mindset that Peter had. He said, I'm only going to talk to Jews. I want to deal with those other folks. All right, all right, all right. Let me get ready to that. All right. In order to appreciate good claims, the first thing we know is what? We must recognize how dirty the situation is. Right, right. You got to recognize. You got to, once you see how filthy something is, and it's getting cleaned up, you appreciate that. All right. But not only do you need to recognize how dirty it is, in order to appreciate good cleaning, you must respect the one who does cleaning. All right. God is the one who does all the cleaning. Yes, he does. But last thing, you're ready to give you one, and I promise you I'm done. In order to truly appreciate a good cleaning, you must, you are required to participate. All right. Let's try to say, I got to get in. 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 You are required to participate. All right, let me make it clean. Thanks. Can I go back to these chillers one last time? I promise you, I won't do it again. When it comes to those of us who have been black all our lives, and those of us who have eaten chillers, there is an unwritten rule that one black, black folks. Many of us were taught this rule by our parents. We may have learned it on our own after living and learning and seeing things. But, but when it comes to chitlins, there is an unwritten rule that we all live by. Yeah. Can I tell you what it is? You can't eat everybody's chitlins. <laughs> you can't eat everybody's chitlins. I don't know where we got it from. Maybe our mom and dad told us, we know you can't eat everybody's chitlins. <laughs> And it has nothing to do with the flavor. It has nothing to do with how seasonal it has nothing to do with Mr. Pat and the recipe. It has nothing to do with it. It has all to do with how clean they are. But if you give it to anybody, you don't know how clean they are. And we know as black folks, if we go to a large function, with a bunch of folks who we really don't know, just barely know them, and they are serving chitlins. You know, I get something else. That's how we do it. And this also applies. Come here, come here. This applies to your free clean chitlins you buy at the store. You know what I'm talking about. You cannot just buy those free clean chitlins and put them in the pot and start cooking. Because you know how dirty they still are. And they have to be cleaned up by the right person, by someone who knows what they're doing. Growing up in our home, once my mom, Shirley Young at the time, had finished cleaning those chitlins and cooked them, everybody knew it was okay to eat them. Our cousins would come over to the house and dig right into the pot because they knew that Shirley Young had cleaned those chitlins. Yeah, her kids may have started it, but it was Shirley Young who finished it. Right. In the text, once the Lord got Peter straight and told him that once God has cleaned something, that ought to settle it. God wasn't going to let Peter stay there. He says, he is about now, he's now about to put Peter to the test. All right. He said, okay, I told you Peter wasn't clean, it's okay. But now I'm about to see if you believe what I'm saying. All right. Because see, Peter's still confused. Yeah. He's not quite sure how to apply his knowledge that he's just received. He's not quite sure what it all means. And while he is sitting on the rooftop trying to figure it out, God is outside already working it out. God is saying, God is saying, okay, we see God's Holy Spirit going to work. He tells Peter, go on downstairs. There are three people waiting to see you, and they are about to change your life. Peter. All right. And he said, don't you be afraid to go with them, Peter. Don't you worry. Don't you fret. They're working for me, Peter. You go ahead and do that. All right. St. Paul can take this. When God tells us to do something, we don't have to worry about all the situation. We don't have to worry about who's involved, whether that person's going to do what God said. If God has told us to do it, let God work with those Jesus, Jesus. Let God work. When you got a boss who's giving you a hard time with that job, and you know God has given you that job, you pray before you go to work, and you read your daily bread, and you drive on to work, and you say, no weapon point that gets me shall prosper. When you go into that office, you know that that boss has no authority over you. He has to bow down and respond to the Lord Jesus Christ. And all you got to do is just do what God said. God told you to do don't you worry about them. They are working for me, Peter. Right, right. Okay. In the text, he tells me to go downstairs. Don't you worry, go in with them. And Peter did what God said. He didn't need any 
anyone else to encourage him. He didn't have, need to have a meeting with the other apostle. He didn't need a pep talk. He didn't need anyone to tell them uh, that he didn't even need folks to tell them. He Peter, there's people, people downstairs waiting on you. God, Holy Spirit, had already told Peter, they are downstairs waiting for you because God was working in that situation. And this was the same Holy Spirit whom Peter met on that day of Pentecost. Right. And now this Holy Spirit is whispering in Peter's ears, saying, don't you worry, Peter. You go ahead and go downstairs. Don't be worried. Don't be afraid. Don't you fret. They are working for me. And St. Paul, you and I, can I tell you, we have that same Holy Spirit. And he is still, still speaking to you. And he is still speaking to me. And that means, St. Paul, Whatever, whatever predicament you may have find yourself in, whatever you find yourself coming to the end of the road, or you're just at a fork in the road, and you don't know which way to go, you don't know where to turn, you need to remind yourself that you are not in this by yourself, but Jesus said, I'm with you always. Jesus is going to work in the age, and God's Holy Spirit is going to lead, guide, and direct.
well with this place. Some of us are too embarrassed to even share some of the things we did. Some of us know we only have one day in our house to sleep on, but yet we slept in five different bedrooms. Some of us know some of the illegal things we have put in our bodies. Some of us maybe came in here with a criminal record. Well, and yet God has washed us clean. Oh my God. That's the good news of the gospel. Uh -huh. That's what it means. Gospel means good news. And our job, my friends, our job yeah. is not to keep it to ourselves. Yes, the Lord has saved me. Yes, he has delivered me. But he said, don't hold it to yourself. Go out now and tell others about this. All right. And when we start telling others, people are going to lay down their